On this episode of Greco Fabulous, an innocent looking Craigslist ad turns out to be a whole lot more. Good morning everybody, I'm at the Bank Nizzle, about to make a cash withdrawal. Uh, taking a little trip this morning to hopefully get some cool stuff off of Craigslist. Um, it's an hour away, so I really hope this thing doesn't flake out. Getting a little bit of the heebie-jeebies like I normally do. Um, very responsive over you know email, gave me her phone number, but the last two, the only responses I've got through text have been the thumbs up emoji. So I don't know if that's a red flag, but could be. So let's see what happens. Bye. Is this kind of what uh, the so rest is, or how? Yeah, you're... this is mostly Star Wars, and uh, if you're looking for the GI Joe, uh, yeah, just pull all that off. Yeah. This one's still in pretty good shape. That's. That's and, yeah, feel free to take snow it. Snowcat thing. Yeah. 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 Did you get one of those to turn on? Um, one of the. Uh... Oh yeah, yeah. Soundwave works, uh, or Shockwave. I mean, the, the gray uh, radio shack. Oh, cool. Yeah, he's still. I mean the. Um, as you can see, the trigger is kind of busted off, but it still it's, it still works. I can grab the nine volt for you. I don't know. I think that's okay. Let's see. And so there's this helicopter. I got Pee Wee in there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So yeah, that's. I mean, this. Oh no! All right. Well, <laughs> it was all right. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Those are the plastic. It's brittle. Yeah. Like it's still. Oh gosh. All right. Well, never mind. This one's <laughs> this one's trash now because I touched it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you go inside. I'll do this if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> right? A little, a little more delicate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was a lot better playing with these when I was a kid. <laughs> so are we, um, are we trying to limit it to just Star Wars and, and G.I. Joe? Or does he have like a, a bunch of mixed stuff? So I don't oh, know. yeah. I mean, there's... Um, no, I can... I can, I can. Oh, wow. I think I get some Voltron. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some that mask. Voltron, uh, he's just missing the feet. Sure. Thanks very much. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, absolutely. No, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad they're going to a good home. I'm glad it's you know you know you seem like you actually really love this stuff. So it's, it's, I do. Yeah, I can I can show you pictures if you had any doubts. Oh no no no. <laughs> um, so no, it, that was that was really easy. So I appreciate it. Thank, no, thank you so much. Pleasure. That was, that was great. Yeah. Definitely worth the trip out here. Absolutely. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. All right, everyone, so I'm gonna get right into the main event. That's why I'm going down and dirty. I don't have time to make this perfect, to edit out all my ums and my ahs. I'm actually gonna be a human being for once because there's just way too many toys to show. So I don't have time to make a stand-up comedy routine around this because I actually want this video to come out sometime before 2022. So for those of you that hate my jokes, hate my attempts at humor, hate laughing, this is a great victory for you. But it will be short-lived. Because my day of reckoning is upon us. So let's get to those toys. So this right here, minus one big exception because he can't fit in the frame, so stay tuned for that, is everything that was listed in the original Craigslist ad. So anyways, let's go down the line here. You know, we got the mini bots, we got gears, we got one of the mini spies, we got a cliff jumper, I always get this guy confused. He's either run about or run amok. We got Blitzwing, has his turret, which is good. This is Twin Twist. I'm assuming because of the drills, but I always get him confused too. 
Did you know I did impressions? This is an armless, fistless, totally accessoryless hoist. Snarl, one of the Dinobots. Cup, Hot Rod, Rekar, so that's like the Transformers, the movie crew right there. Jetfire, obviously, that's a great one to have. He is very sought after, looking really white. I would not dare transform him because I've snapped so many wings on those things. In the middle, you might be thinking, hey, that's Shockwave, but it's not. That's actually Shackwave. That's the Radio Shack version. Looks very similar. Dead giveaway is that it is gray instead of purple. You can actually kind of see I have my Shockwave in the background right there. Um, so I think he was technically called Galaxy Man. So this was the only one that had, or at least was on the surface, told that there was damage. He's missing an ear. He has uh, some crotchless stuff going on there. And his trigger's kind of broken off. But his electronics still work. So that's pretty exciting. And then in the back corner, we got our boy Blaster, which wasn't disclosed at the time. Uh, this wasn't disclosed at the time, but his eject door, is, the tab is actually broken. So it, it will not stay in place. Or the eject feature will not work. You just pull it off. See how it's broken right there? So this is what is going to happen. You just have to manually pull it in and out. But his ears are intact, which is always something that is not the case. Oh my god, I totally forgot to include Jazz. I'm so sorry. Uh, not because he is not important to me. In fact, he is very important to me. But I kind of kept him isolated from all the other characters because... dun 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 his windshield is not broken. So freaking rare. This is the first intact one that I have in my collection. So now that I've given Jazz his all his due and respect, let's see the big guy. Trypticon, the walking, talking, Tyrannosaurus rocking, Decepticon base. Now this guy was definitely the major eye candy from this lot and which pretty much put me over the edge in terms of whether or not I wanted to make a play for it. I already have a body but I am missing a plethora of pieces and a giant guy like this did come with a bunch of them. So one of the benefits of this lot is that it came with all of these. Now he's still not complete unfortunately but it gets me a lot lot closer. So right there is where the story was supposed to end. That was the only thing in the Craigslist ad. That is what $150 and a 45 mile one way trip was going to net me. But I start to get little indicators that there might be more. One of them was dead obvious when the seller outright told me, hey, do you have any interest in G.I. Joe or GoBots? But I really knew when I was in for a treat when I pulled into the driveway and I saw this on the ground. Okay, nobody said anything about cardboard. When I was pulling into the driveway and I saw this on the ground, I couldn't get out of my car fast enough. This thing is gorgeous. And I knew I, this was the moment where I was like, this is about to be something really, really special. And when I started talking to them, it like a light bulb just went off in my head that I don't think these guys are gonna be adding to the price at all. Like, I think this is all inclusive. But everything after this point was a brand new negotiation and honestly, you're not going to believe what I ended up getting it for. We'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe is there. So I was going to start with the toys, but I'm just obsessed with cardboard. As you should be, because goddamn, this is a masterpiece. So obviously leading up to this, I was expecting some G.I. Joes. And I was trying to get my buddy Tim to tag along with me because he's the Joe expert and I was pretty much riding blind here. But I'll tell you exactly at the end how I managed to pull this off even without anyone's assistance. I mean we got some heavy hitters like we got a Zartan box which is like a huge deal is what the kids are telling me. Uh, unfortunately the points are cut out but it's still like a really crisp box. We got the LCV recon sled. We got the Flying Submarine Shark. We got the Silver Mirage Motorcycle. I mean, look at the firepower these things have. 
We got the Assault Copper Dragonfly XH1 with Wild Bill. And the big guy in the back, we got the Mauler, the MBT Tank. And like I said, these were all folded up nice and neat, just in a baggie, waiting there. I've come, this is like the, at least the second or third haul where I come across somebody folding up their boxes. Like, as a kid, did, did any of you even think of doing that? Did your parents even care about the packaging enough to kind of fold it up all nice and neat so it wouldn't get all bent and creased? So pretty amazing in its own right. Unfortunately, not every box I just showed you was accompanied by its figure or vehicle, uh, but I still came away with a decent box of G.I. Joe stuff. So like I said, I'm, I don't pretend to be a G.I. Joe expert and it's gonna go on display here when I can't name any of these things, but figured I would show you close-ups of everything I got here. Um, you know, nothing is necessarily complete. There are things missing, but I got, I got a nice collection of vehicles I mean, there's a dragonfly right there. Unfortunately, when the guy handed it to me, he grabbed it by the propeller here and snapped it right there. I mean, this, oh no, all right, well, <laughs> it was all right. Yeah. So that was kind of a bummer. Um, but in addition to what's on this table, I'll show you the rest of the box here. We got some other various pieces of planes. We got this guy. We got the mauler right there. I know that because of the box. You know that. That vehicle right there, part of a tactical battle platform. Serpenter's little goblin glider. And we even have a few uh, figures thrown in for good measure. A lot of these guys were in like the driver's seats, like hidden. I think, yeah, I think one of them was in the mauler, if I remember. That's always the best part of these loose toy finds is digging out drivers that people forgot about because they were playing with them, you know, and stuck them in there. Uh, supposedly, this guy had a lot more when it comes to figures, uh, but he kind of mentioned that he had already gotten rid of them. And I was like, oh, did you like list another ad? Because, you know, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't find it. And he said no. So I'm kind of curious uh, what he actually did with them because he specifically mentioned that for the Transformers, he had a lot more, but his, co his cousin kind of rated it like, like 10, 15 years ago. So... It's just, I want to know what happened to the figures, man, because in addition to what remained, he has a ton of paperwork and card backs, which I'm going to show you real quick. And the potential of what could have been here figure-wise is off the charts. All right, now here's what I'm talking about when I said this could have been a lot better. Like, look at all these card backs. And these are some big names. Again, from what I've been told. So, you know, we got G.I. Joe. Oh, damn, I was, gonna, I was hoping I could read off names. There we go, Duke. I think this is Storm Shadow. Snake Eyes, damn it! <laughs> Such an idiot. This is a uh, Cobra Man. The enemy, Cobra, of course. You gotta be more generic. This is Ice T. Snow Serpent, ugh. All right, so anyways, stop making up bad names, but you know, we got Firefly here. And these were all cut out for the points, I'm assuming. Ricondo. Alpine. Barbecue. Was like Dreadnought? Torch? Blowtorch. Shipwreck. Torpedo. Footloose. Televipers. The enemy. I remember that one. Haha, <laughs> I pass. And bazooka? Yeah! So good. Oh, and this was a cool little piece. Apparently this was a mail-away pin. G.I. Joe Machine Gunner. Apparently not super rare by, or valuable by any means, but still pretty baller. Even has the original clip. You can see 1982 Hasbro. I'm glad I cut my fingernails before I did this. Anyways, moving on. All right, so we have this giant Ziploc bag just full of all G.I. Joe paraphernalia. I mean, we got instruction booklets, we got sticker sheets, 
you know, some of them unused up to a certain point, other pack-in promotional material, just really cool stuff to find in there. So that's G.I. Joe. They mentioned GoBots, but I'm going to skip GoBots for a second because even though they were mentioned by name, they didn't make a big dent in this lot. But this other toy line did, and uh, you might be familiar with them. You guys ever hear about a little indie film called Star Wars? Yep, again, I am starting with the money shot. So in that bag of boxes was this Star Wars Empire Strikes Back Millennium Falcon spaceship. I hope I pronounced that correctly. It's the first time I've ever heard about that. So obviously I know Star Wars. Everyone knows Star Wars. Even though I am not a big Star Wars toy collector, my god, is that a beautiful piece of toy history. Watch it on Ed's Retro Geek Out. This thing is amazing, and one of the best parts of this lot was just piecing everything together. Like, this stuff didn't come all organized and intact. Like, we had shells, and then just bags and bags of pieces, and I literally ran home, and that was the first thing I did. Didn't even say hi to my wife and kids, just started doing research, piecing these things together, started playing with toys that I didn't give a damn about at all, but now I appreciate as an adult. And this thing is just an amazing piece of toy architecture. So, I mean, it looks pretty good from the outside, right? It's not 100% complete. There are a few things missing. We just uh, pop the top here. Just looking on the inside here, this popped off, but this is a false floor. As I mentioned, it is missing. It's uh, the training ball with the string and all that. So that's actually pretty common, at least for the ones we've found. And you know what? The sound even works. So let me pop in some batteries and prove to you that I'm not a liar. So but let's try it. Loud noises! All right, that grinding sound, pretty sure that's it. Uh, from what I've been told and from what I've heard in other videos, like all that is is that there's a little motor in here and it just revs up. That was, you know, it's not like nowadays where they have like, uh, you know, pre-recorded sound bites or anything like that. It was, it's literally a sound that's manufactured by physical moving pieces inside of the toy. So I'm sure it doesn't sound, it sounds a little more run down than it did, you know, fresh out the box, but it's still there, baby. You know what, one funny thing about this, there's actually a note on the side here that says, uh, small and medium picture frames. So at one point they use this box to hold picture frames. Unbelievable, right? But we're kind of glad they did because it might not have survived all these years had it not. But anyways, that was a great start, but it's definitely not the end of Star Wars. Alright, I was just me trying to do the part. But anyways, what I'm getting at is at at or ATAT for those of you that are wrong. Look, oh my god. Do you see how giant this thing is? Again, I am not a huge Star Wars person, but I'm like, damn, I kind of want to keep this. Standing on all four legs, this thing is a giant walking battle platform playset, whatever you want to call this thing. It is ginormous, and it's super cool. So there's actually not a ton to it as far as like, I mean, you pop off this door, you can get inside. Uh, sorry, I don't have like lights all the way in there, but you can you know, store your figures in there. This is just the battery compartment. It does fold down nicely, but it's kind of a pain to get out, so I didn't want to mess with it. But there, you have a little pulley where you can manipulate the head here. You know, you can go left to right. You can pull it to go up and down. And one of the cool things about it is that from the front here, unfortunately, it is missing it's two laser cannons or chin guns as they're known. I believe those are referred to as chin guns. But if you press the button with the 2D batteries in it, that will happen. So you see it'll, it would move it up and down and a light shines. I do not have the box for it, but I do have an instruction booklet. So now that we got the big guys out of the way, let's see some of the smaller figures. 
All right, and we got a bunch more. Again, some of these are just pieces and parts, but still a great reflection on how great this guy's childhood was. So obviously here we have an X-Wing. Unfortunately, it does have some broken wings, which is too bad because it has like the guns and the cockpit cover. It's pretty much complete other than that. Some of these wings are actually broken. Like I could pull those off if I wanted to. Uh, I did try the batteries in there, but there was some batteries living in there. So it was super corroded. I'm sure if I clean it off, we might have some better luck. But for now, an almost complete X-Wing is at our disposal. And then we have a almost complete land speeder here. Got a snow speeder here, which is missing its uh, cockpit cover. But everything else is in there and the batteries do work. And here we go. And to get the lighting effects, we'll turn off the lights. Here we have Han Solo's gun from Return of the Jedi. Uh, obviously these things are still kind of dirty and they got a little melty at some point in their lives. I guess that's what, you know, blaster fire will do to you. That's pretty cool. And then you actually have these, uh, these mini play sets, which I didn't really know existed, but like these three guys combine to make like the Bespin, Bespin City play set or something. One goes, I don't know the exact layout, but it's something like like that. And they had a bunch of mini figurines, which I could probably show off in a second. And that was another micro play set that I only had one piece of, but it was like the compactor. You might, might be familiar with. Then you had this guy, which is whatever. And down here at the bottom, this thing that's rotting, which is too bad because it's super cool, is Chewbacca's like bandolier or whatever, his little chest strap. This is a wearable piece for children, not for people my size anymore, believe me, I've tried. And you actually stick your figures in there and carry them, or you did before, like, it's actually pretty gross, like this stuff is literally just falling apart everywhere. But it was pretty sick to find that. And there's more! We have a whole bunch of figures and accessories that I've identified as obviously coming from Star Wars. I mean, we got Admiral Akbar, uh, two C-3PO's. There we go. There we go. And I'm pretty sure they're both the same. That one of them does not seem to be the one that like gets all disemboweled or disembodied and stuff. Here's a Lando without his cape. This guy. <laughs> Whoops! I just. Boba Fett, there we go, I know that one. I don't know all my Star Wars figures or characters, but obviously these are different versions of like uh, you know, troopers and stuff. This was a different droid that was on there. We got our man Darth Vader, unfortunately does not have his lightsaber. We have Yoda, who unfortunately does not have anything except his belt. No, uh, no staff or anything like that. Then we got Han Solo here, Hoth Han. And he does have that, that accessory kit. There's a backpack there. And then this also came with it. And then we got a bunch of, uh, like I mentioned, those mini figurines that went with those uh, play sets. Here's an example of some of those. That Boba Fett is pretty sick. Grab a few more. These came all mixed up. We got a bunch of different Lukes, Stormtroopers. This guy's getting shot, it looks like. We're having a deep belly laugh. Carbonite. Another Darth Vader. A few more options here. And then like, like a bunch of mixed accessories. Like a few of these things came from some Ewok. Like rock throwing. Playset or you know apparatus. So those are the things that I've identified so far. Oh I almost forgot. I actually got some uh, paraphernalia too. Uh, we got this Star Wars question and answer book about space. Can rockets fly to the stars? Are there moon creatures? Can humans explore Mars? All these can be answered in when did this book come out? 1979. Sure none of that's changed since then. In fact, it probably went backwards. But we got that book. We got this tin Empire Strikes Back Star Wars lunchbox. Amazing. Uh, you know, it has a little rust obviously, but these tin guys are just gorgeous. Way better than their plastic counterparts. 
I would like this would have been amazing to bring to school as a kid. And that's probably what he did. And if you open it up, you hear something clanking inside. I think you know what it is. Yep, it's the thermos. Yoda there. Totally complete. And then there's this like random Empire Strikes Back cup. Han Solo, Leia, Luke Skywalker. A little beat up. I mean, it was used. And then there's also this extra. I don't remember, you guys can tell me. So in here is the one that you know flips up so you can drink out of it. This is more of like a cover. Did they come that way? I don't know. And we even have this beat up Return of the Jedi poster. Sorry, I'm not doing it justice, but this is the best I can do as a one man operation. So that was Star Wars. So right now, let's uh, let's swing back to Transformers for a second, because uh, I didn't actually wrap that guy up. I can't deal with that now. All right, now going back to cardboard, we had a few examples from G1 Transformers in the mix. Here we have Ultra Magnus, and then we have Onslaught. A box here. It's a little. It is missing one side, so it's not perfect by any means. Don't see any robot points cut up, so he wasn't interested in getting a reflector, apparently. And then this guy is brand new to me. I do not have a Galvatron box, so pretty excited about that. Uh, I'd be even more excited if the Styrofoam was there, but that's totally fine. That's a fine for another day. And in addition to that, one of the cooler things is, again, these, these bags of just pamphlets and accessories and all that good stuff there's some surprising value in here it's not just the complete figures i mean you got plenty of instruction booklets and again this is a nod to like figures that he had i mean he had an omega supreme we already know about galvatron this is a cool one this is, goes with the radio shack Soundwave. magic robot pistol graphic illustrat you know definitely nothing knockoffish about that Silver Bolt, so he might have had Superion at some point. There's Onslaught. Oh, this is Optimus, obviously. Soundwave. And, you know, he cut up some other boxes. So he had a Soundwave box that he cut up, which is just a travesty nowadays. Uh, there's Jazz, obviously. Skywarp. Two Jazzes. Cups booklet. Looks like he might have had that transforming watch at some point. And the coolest part of all those odds and ends in that little baggie are these unused sticker sheets. Now, I don't have one for every single figure, but this right here, completely unused sticker sheet for Omega Supreme. Here we have a mostly unused Megatron sticker sheet. Totally untouched Galvatron sticker sheet. And then this one's pretty cool. It's a, it's a biggie is for Jetfire. It's actually four four pages long. Fourth page has been mostly used up, but that wasn't touched, and this one's missing like two stickers, this one one. So, guys, I'm telling you right now, don't sleep on these. If, if as a collector, having original sticker sheets don't matter to you, like to me, I don't really care about it. If I really wanted to sticker my figures, I could just buy like cheap repros. I don't really, like it's not something that's important to me right now. These guys have value, and I'm finding that out firsthand. For example, from this lot, I had an unused Trypticon sticker sheet, and I knew a guy that was looking for one, and he was willing to pay $90 for it. So I'm telling you, like if you are bundling up Transformers to, to sell, don't just throw these guys in with the figures it doesn't you're not going to make a complete galvatron automatically you know worth 40 dollars more because you throw in the sticker sheet no but you can make it just by selling the sticker sheet alone and you're not going to lose money on the figure in box all right so we're all done with transformers and now we're going to wrap it up with just the the odds and ends of this lot the loose the loose figures and pieces that didn't really fit into these major major categories and toy lines so let's take us home. This damn bike, I hate this bike. I hate this freaking bike. This stupid bike. All right, so this is the last box of the batch. Not as exciting as some of the others. Not as vintage, but I love laser tag. 
These are not the 80s World of Wonder laser tag, same brand though. But at this point, it was being kind of produced by Tiger. So this is kind of like the junk box and not junk, but it's identifiable junk. This is junk that I figured out what it is. So first off, we have these tote bags, ET and me. This is from like 19, okay, well it's not branded on here, but I looked it up. It's like from like 1982 Universal Studios. So these are cool little toy, toy bags, tote bags. We got two of them. There you go. And then just digging around in here, you can see a lot of various toy lines and some other things. Obviously here is Switchblade for mask with Miles Mayhem inside. Not complete, missing his propeller, his landing gear, some other things. Um, I saw what this guy was probably by this. Stomper, this is a Stomper. Here we got a Super Gobot. I think it's a Warpath. Unfortunately, he is missing his propeller as well. Here's a, here's a, an actual Gobot. Remember when the lady was like, do you, do you like Gobots? And there's like hardly any in this lot. But here's Leader 1, the gray version. Down there we got like Spacey. Uh, this is Mask as well. Cyclone, I believe it is. This is cool. This is like a little Oscar the Grouch watch. Uh, various random accessories. We got He Man Shield, Skeletor's Sword. Uh, this is cool. We got Tales from the Crypt Keeper figures. Got the hooded one here. And I know we had one other guy somewhere in here. But yeah, we got, you know, Mechanex armor, this club. There's another shield from Motu. I know these legs. Pee-wee, what were you doing down there? Just watching a movie. <laughs> God, he's never gonna live that down, is he? Oh, here's the other Crypt Keeper figure. Right there. Never seen these guys before out in the wild. Some more mass accessories. There's a Motu accessory. This is kind of neat, and I wish... I mean, I'm really hoping this guy gives me like a call back. But uh, this is the battery cover to those uh, mini arcades from like the late 70s, early 90s. So this is Zaxxon. And this one is Pac-Man. So it's funny, like you would think, you know, you find these things all the time with battery covers missing. And this is like the opposite scenario. Sticking with video games, here's a video master's guide to Donkey Kong. Steve Sanders, was he one of the people in King of Kong? I don't remember. Uh, but I might actually give this a read because I actually really like Donkey Kong, and I don't really have a lot of strategy behind it. How to get killed? Isn't that what you want to avoid? Anyways, so there's that. This is a this is a really cool basic Atari Touch Me game. It's basically Simon. So that was kind of neat. It does work. I did test it out. There we go. That one's missing the battery cover, so we don't have a reverse situation there. And this is. Let's see, I lift it up. It's in really small writing, so give me a second here. Oh, it's not. It's a five winder, which I'm not really sure what that is. This guy here is a Rough Rider. And this is a little random piece to a Rampage Rock playset. This is from like, it wasn't Action Force 2000, Battle Force 2000, I believe. So that's the random like smorgasbord of toy lines and pieces that I was able to identify. And of course with all that, you have the paperwork to go along with it. I mean, you got really robotic stuff, some unused sticker sheets for, for like, what is this? And that's still robotics. Uh, some random card backs. Robotron, Buddy L. Those are the ones where you look at it at first glance, you think it's uh you think it's a GoBot, but it's not. So here's some sticker sheets here. This was laser laser combat. Got some Starcom stuff in there. So this kid seemed to have it all. Oh, there we go, another back in here. Diecast metal convertible robots. You don't sound like a knockoff at all. Oh, here's a submarine. Yeah, this is totally the ones that are GoBot knockoffs. So a bunch of stuff in there, and then some more touted stuff. I think this might be all mask related. So here's a Boulder Hill instruction booklet. 
the uh, sticker sheets, which I don't know about the mask side of things, but I'm sure somebody would want this. Sticker sheets, you know, some built-in promotional material, some little mask comics. Where illusion is the ultimate weapon. All right, and very last bit of this video is the box of stuff I have yet to identify, so I can give you kind of a an idea of what's in there. I hate this place. I hate it. I just want to go home. All right, and I still, as you can see, have a lot of work to do. This is a mess of parts. I mean, some of them just, you know, some of them look like certain toy lines, like you know, you, you look like Star Wars to me. There's obviously like you look like GI Joe. You know, and a lot of the missiles and stuff. So I have some direction. When it comes to identifying some of these figures and pieces, I just I haven't totally like nailed it down just yet. This I know actually Oh, I forgot! This goes to a Voltron Blue Guardian, it's a foot. But speaking of Voltron, this guy was in here. How can I forget about Voltron 1? So unfortunately he's not complete. He's missing his hands and one of his feet. But that's it. Like I love digging through this whole package and just piecing this guy together you know, discovering one thing at a time oh he's also missing his chest shield but that's it man and I almost got a complete one so what an oversight that almost was I was too busy showing you parts and like G.I. Joe butts I don't know about you but I'm out of breath and really 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 sweaty uh, it doesn't help that I use like old school lights that are blinding and super hot Gotta get some of those uh, LEDs, you know and I'm talking about Patreon, baby. Hook it up. Super chat. I know it's only a live show thing, but send me money. Anyways, so wow. I mean, you saw what that that pickup was supposed to be, and then what it turned into. Unfreaking believable. So let's talk dollars and cents, okay? So we already know. I went up there under the pretense that I, I was getting a bunch of loose transformers for $150. You know, and they meant to casually mention they might have some G.I. Joe and GoBots. Didn't mention any of the other stuff. Pull up to the driveway, there's a Trypticon box, and he's like, yeah, you know, he pretty much talking like that that was included. So I was like, okay, 150 were sold on the Transformers. That's a done deal. Now for this other stuff, I was like, I was really trying to get my buddy Tim, like I was sending him, you know, I asked him to come there, you know, because we, we kind of work well together. Like he feels like... The, the gaps in my knowledge. See, I was quick to not just pause on gaps because I know you, you, you guys, you would have ran with that. Um, you know, we, we work well together, and as far as negotiating and bouncing, you know, numbers and ideas off of each other. So I felt a little handicapped because we were talking about GI Joes and Star Wars and things like that that I didn't know much about. But unfortunately, where I was, there was not phone signals, so I was trying to send him pictures and call him, and it just was not happening. So I, I was up front. I was like. All right, guys, I'm going to try to do my best. I'm not going to try to, like, keep you here forever. You know, what do you want for all of it? Because, you know, that's that's what I want to do. I don't want to piecemeal this thing. I want to take home everything. And, like, without that much hesitation or thought, the guy was like, what about another 50 bucks? 50. Five zero. And he was asking his mother. So his mother is the one that put out the Craigslist ad, but it was his toys. So I'm not really sure, like, what that relationship was about. Like, who was keeping the money or what the incentive was to sell them. So he turned to his mom, and his mom was like, yeah, at least. And I was like, I jumped right in. I was like, I was like, hey, for 50 bucks, I'm comfortable with that. I don't I don't need Tim. I could, I could get this deal for $200. And I did. I freaking did it. Okay, I, I can't get too excited because it's not like I was, like, some master negotiator, like, that was their asking price. I was just, it was just unreal to me that they could ask $150 for some loose robots and then just $50 more for everything else. Even though they were, you know, to some extent parts and pieces, but boxes, everything, another 50 bucks. Wow. I was not expecting that. And I wish I got the actual negotiation on tape. I mean, I tried to get the exchanging of money on tape, but again, I don't want to run in there, you know, cameras blazing, you know, Mr. Reality TV star. You know, I just, I want to make people comfortable. I don't want to make them feel like I'm getting like one over on them or 
you know, have some like malicious intent. Or at least not until you know the deal is sealed, right? So, so I didn't capture it. So take my word for it if you want. I mean, you've seen what I've gotten on this channel. Those of you that know me in person know that I'm not some big spender in terms of like paying retail or anywhere close to it. I'm just I'm just a guy that loves toys and is really lucky, apparently. Two hundred dollars. Wow. And I already said I already sold Trypticon for. The guy offered 90, but I gave it to him for 80 because he bought some other stickers for me. I already sold a sticker for 80 bucks. So, who knows where this is going to end up. I will tell you though, off the bat, Trypticon box and the pieces, staying with me. Galvatron box, staying with me. Um, I feel like there's one Jazz. I need Jazz. Jazz is staying with me. And maybe some other random parts that I might need, like accessory-wise for Transformers. And I think my buddy's going to pick, pick through some of the boxes and card backs for G.I. Joe. But other than that, this is going to be available. Where and when? I don't know. You know, maybe if they speed up with that vaccine. So, thanks for watching. I'm sorry that this is so, like, low-key. I bet I'm going to, like, re-watch this footage and just completely hate myself. Because I don't have the attention span to just watch somebody, like, struggle through this show and tell of toys. But this was really the only way to do a large haul like this. I couldn't, you know, give her every toy its day in the sun with, like, this little, you know, display spindle action and ha 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 skit, blah blah blah. Like, this video would never see the light of day. And because I decided to do it this way, you're actually going to see it relatively quickly. So... I don't know, you tell me, was it worth it or is this not the Greco Fabulous that you wanted? And for those of you that actually like stuck around for this, the end of this video, get a life! Alright, I'm gonna go towel off. Whew! Too busy kicking ass. Toy ass! Yeah! Yeah! Alright, bye!